Hi, I, we are so pleased to welcome Bishop, Bishop Van of the Diocese of Orange in California as we look ahead to coverage of the dedication of Christ Cathedral on July 17th. Bishop, thanks so much for being with us. Oh, you're welcome. It's a beautiful day here, and uh, it's my day off, so I have plenty of time to speak with you. Oh, great. So thanks for sharing uh, your time on your, your day off. I know you must be very busy. Uh, but, you know, I want to hear a little bit about the process from that purchase in 2011 to the upcoming dedication. This has been an amazing process, and I heard that you actually selected some of the materials for use in the cathedral. Tell us about all of that. I did, Bonnie. That's quite correct. Uh, one, of the, one of the blessings of my time in Italy, my Rome studying years ago, was I learned Italian, which I've been able to keep up. So, because uh, the cathedral is supposed to be a place of beauty and art where God can be known, I felt it was a particular responsibility of myself to really know what was being selected. So I made three trips to Verona and Carrara and Suave, those places, to help select uh, the stone for the, for, for the cathedra, for the altar, for the ambo, for the baptismal font, for the flooring, and for the area behind the, uh, behind the bishop's chair. So I did. I went three different times, and I was able to visit the quarries, and I got to know the stone workers and the factories who were making the, who put all this together and got to be friends with a number of them. So I did. I went three times to say, especially with the altar, could they make the designs that they could look like a whole unity of design with all the, with all the veins and the marble. So I did. That's great. We're looking at some video that's on the amazing dedication website of you uh, going through the statuary and some of the marble areas there. Um, it just, uh, it's a lot of work, so we thank you for that. It's going to be a place of great beauty. Um, one of the things I loved when we went out for the Magnificat um, event a few years ago was the burial ground there on the campus. And I was so pleased that as a diocese, you've decided to continue that tradition, and it'll be I believe the only Catholic ecumenical um, burying ground in in your area. Well, it is a, it really functions now as a, as a diocesan cemetery, with the rest of our cemeteries that we manage it to really preserve them and make them beautiful places where the, the, the our beloved dead are, are are buried. So yes, and so many of the folks that were buried there previously, people still come to visit them, like sure. Roger Williams, the pianist, you know, for example. And so it, it's really been received well. I know initially, before I got here, there was some concern raised, but everybody has been grateful for the care that we have shown the place. And, you know, the Schulers are buried there now, and we have a, we have a lot of Catholic funerals there now. So it's sure. really, it is, it's a, an ecumenical place, truly. That's great. We are so looking forward to the dedication that will air here on Catholic TV on the 17th. But besides that, there's some other really exciting events, a youth event. Tell us a little bit about the other events to celebrate this, this great dedication. Well, I think we could look at actually a week-long series of events, beginning with this coming Saturday, the 13th of July, which will be a gala here on the campus. And uh, the Symphony, Pacific Symphony will be playing in the cathedral and Jackie Ivancho will be singing, and mm -hmm. we have a lot of people coming. And it also is meant to promote the work of the cathedral and the outreach to the needy. So, yes, that starts. Then also then on then coming next week, on the 16th, we have uh, a, a vigil of the Arboretum with the relics, the evening prayer. Then the next day is the dedication. Then the next day, July 18th, is the evening prayer of Thanksgiving. And then, in the, and then over the weekend, we have an, an evening for the parish, or study for the parish and evening for the young people, the youth and young adults. It's amazing how much involvement from the entire community, as well as both those spiritual and corporal works that are going to take place. Um, it's just a great way to be part of the community in general and be, of course, the seat of the beautiful Diocese of Orange. You know, um, what was the former, of course, Crystal Cathedral was very much beloved by, by people all over the world. But now Christ Cathedral continues that tradition. How can people support this magnificent transformation and support the Diocese of Orange? Then we can go back, first of all, to Dr. Schuler. He really wished that the, the ministry continue here. That's why he supported the diocese acquiring the property. So, you know, I would, first of all, invite people to come and to see, you know, to experience the liturgy, to walk around the grounds, to take time to pray, and we have a wonderful group of docents who make people welcome. But as well, we have a, we'll have a schedule like 11 masses every weekend, wow. and all kinds of activities that go with that. So everybody is involved. And the masses are in four languages: English, Spanish, 
uh, Mandarin, Chinese, and Vietnamese. So we try to be universal because really Orange County is very universal. It's like the whole world. So, and also, I, when I've been here on Sundays, I've met people from all over the United States, the East Coast, the Midwest, and I, I make sure that I welcome them as we do. I want them to feel at home here. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing part of your day off with us. We really appreciate it. And we can't wait to celebrate with your entire diocese on the 17th for the dedication. Thanks so much, Bishop Van. Welcome. It'll be a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.